what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel so i'm over here at dv's and i've been grinding away at this intake manifold for project sleeper you know the 408 cubic inch small block chevy that's supposed to look like a crate 350 well let's take a look at this intake and i can show you what i've been doing if you remember in my video that i did before this is an older holly street dominator intake um let's see i think the part number 300-19 yeah drop it the one thing about this intake is it has a pretty good layout of the runners it's not dog leg like a a very old torker or some of the very early street dominator manifolds it has a nice little radius right here to help direct airflow into the port those dog leg runners that go straight and then try to change direction not good for performance so here's the plenum i'm going to put a picture in of the plenum before that way you can kind of get an idea of what i'm started with i didn't have my camera yesterday or i would have videoed it but in my previous video i also talked about how five and seven in the one eight four three six five seven two firing order seven robs fuel and air from number five here so some of the mods that i've done thus far is this divider here has a very sharp edge i mean it will almost cut you but on this side has a nice gener generous radius i've raised the port up right there and put a nice radius on that even over to here and another thing it i don't know if it'll show up on camera but this has a sharp edge right here to deter airflow from coming over and then i've radiused this side over here because i want this cylinder pulling fuel and air mixture from here not from this side uh, like i said previous it's about impossible to get even distribution in an intake manifold but we try uh, some of the other things you can see that i've radiused all of the runner entrances and i'm still nowhere near being done as of now i think i'm about a quarter of the way done but i'm also going to go in here and remove metal from this wall to widen that port and to give the reflective pulse something to bounce off of i'll put a shelf in there and that will actually help or i think it will how's that but it's coming along quite nice this some of the mods that we got going on here um the thing about this engine build is it's obvious this intake is not probably the best choice but it's a marketplace special 75 bucks now to pay someone to do this you would have a ton of money tied up in it but you can do this kind of stuff at home and david actually has a video on the grinding supply supplies that we actually use something to think about i've got to get off of here and get back to work well i'm over here at joe davis's we're getting ready to get this thing buttoned up and get it to the engine dyno so let's take a look at the intake once we finished it up it's pretty cool so as you can see here you see anything special in there turtle the gasket match turned out really well the one thing that i do or don't do how's that like i don't know if you can see it but that scribe line is the bottom of the port of the head i always leave a step right here for reversion to help kill that but I couldn't get all the way up in there. I only had uh, six inch burrs, but nonetheless, 
this thing is about ready to rock and roll so now let's talk about this turtle here this goes back over 40 years ago on this particular manifold where Visard and Dr. Ayer, Roger Helgeson, developed this and did a bunch of testing on intakes such as this, uh, Y and Team G intakes. And there's some pretty neat things that are done to this. Now, I did all of the grind work on the manifold every bit of it david did this for me and um so let's get into what he actually did we want to cause airflow to go in this port and you notice how this is concave down here that is to direct the air into that runner right there number five and this has a bulge in the center well, obviously, because these runners are further away than the insides. So you can see it's got a bulge on this side. Same thing, contoured, it's concave right there on each of the corners to help direct air and fuel into the inside runners. Now, I'm really excited to see how this intake's going to work. Now, mind you, like I said, this is probably not the best intake manifold for it, but I do know through David's experience that given the work that we've done into it, this can be made into a really good manifold. Um, we're feeding 408 cubic inches, so it's a lot to ask of something that was really designed for 327s and 350s, but I think we'll get there. Let's get this thing bolted on, painted up, and loaded up in the back of the truck. Now here is the crown and jewel that's going on it. This is the 800 CFM Quadrajet that was built by Dean Oliver. If you don't know who Dean Oliver is, you really need to look him up, do a Google search, and his name will pop up a gazillion times, but this thing is as beautiful as a quarter jet can be. I'll just put it that way. Looks like we picked this thing up at the Facebook Marketplace, didn't it, Joe? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook, yeah. Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, another $75 wonder we got here, but I'm really excited to see what tricks and how this thing distributes fuel because you have to remember this is new territory for me. I am not a quadrajet guy. I can do the basics like changing the rear hanger and stuff like that, but I've never dynoed one of these. So I'm really excited to see how this works out. This is what we call crunch time. We get ready to load this thing up on the back of the truck and he's painting the intake. <laughs> oh. Looking good, eh? Let's see you in action. Oh yeah. You ready to go do this, Joe? I'm absolutely ready. <laughs> Christmas morning, right? Yeah. This is your first time being on engine I know, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. A little nervous though. He's gonna have fun. I promise you. So we got about a 45 minute ride ahead of us and then we'll be there. We got this thing docked up. I'm gonna stand here. Uh, we got to wheel it in, change the valve covers, dress it out, and then we should be able to get this thing fired up. Well, it's been about, what, three hours? No. Four hours? Yeah, yeah, about four hours. So it's about four hours. We have the engine on the dyno ready to go. We're checking for fuel leaks, water leaks, make sure that everything's good to go. We are using, of course, the progression ignition system distributor here. All right, so I know that there'll be a lot of first time viewers watching this video. So to give you an idea of what Project Sleeper is, it's, even though it says Good Wrench 350, it's not a 350, folks. This is a 400 small block, board 40 over, so it's a 408. 
It is stuffed with uh, SCAT rotating assembly. It's got Wiseco skip white pistons in it. And we have 10 and a half to one compression ratio. Has a very small Mike Jones custom hydraulic roller that Joe had spec'd out for a previous engine build. He had it, so we used it, even though it's a compromise of sorts. That's what we got. We got the Marketplace Special Holly Street Dominator that you seen me grinding on earlier in the video. And then the crown jewel of the deal is the Dean Oliver built Quadrajet here. I'm really excited to see how this thing does because I've never messed with Quadrajets on a dyno. Or the last time I messed with a Quadrajet, I was like 20 years old. So that's been many moons ago. But Hopefully this thing's gonna make some decent power and uh, we're gonna get after it. All right, Joe, so we've loaded a timing curve into foam. You ready to hear this thing spring to life? Yes, sir. You ready to make some noise? Mm -hmm. Look at this thing. Just look at this thing. Sleeper 350 crate motor. Quarter jet. Yeah, I don't know nothing about all that, but anyways. Well, let's get this party started. All right, go ahead. I think that's pretty sneaky, don't y'all? We've made the initial run in, let it run for about 20, 20 minutes or so. Now what we're doing is something that you really don't see a lot of people on YouTube doing. I'd rather be cautious than not, but we actually drain the oil out, make sure that nothing crazy is going on inside the engine before we start hammering on it. What do you think, Greg? All right, so Joe just drained the oil out of the engine. I just cut the oil filter open and it looks like we got a good clean bill of health here. There's nothing in the pleats. I took it out in the sunlight. I would rather be safe than sorry any day of the week because <clears throat> once you start hammering on it, things can go bad really quick. Ain't that right, Joe? Absolutely. So if you wait until you hear a noise, you've actually waited too long. This here tells you if you got a problem before you can hear it.
That farther bond. I heard it talking. Yeah. Uh, we stopped at like 4,700. Okay. That sounded good. Yeah, the secondaries, I think we're good to start. <laughs> Is that what it made? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 448. So we're making progress. So we're going to try it again. What do you think? Good. It should run now that it's got some timing in it, you would think. Like a proud papa over there. <laughs> Greg, the nervous Greg, grandpa. Yeah, Greg. And I'm just here for the ride. You can see the water temp, oil temp, correction factor next to nothing. They are fuel pretty close 14, not bad. That's pretty good, pretty good at idle almost like that. That quadra jet is unreal. That's the unsung hero. That thing maintained like a 12-5, 12-6 air fuel ratio throughout the entire pool. I, I mean, this is crazy. Dean, you did a killer job. Let's do it. So what we're running into is at 5,700 RPM, this thing is hitting a brick wall and it sounds like it's getting into valve train issues. So what we did is pull the valve covers off, took a quarter turn of preload out of it, hoping that that does something. Um, if not, we may end up having to pull the springs off of the head and actually see what they are. These are the springs that came on the AFR heads are supposed to be set up for hydraulic roller, but it's pretty obvious that this thing is not happy going past 57. So we're going to see what happens with this change that we've made and hopefully we see some sort of improvement. 
If not, it's going to require more work. Fingers crossed. Okay, so what we've done here to rule out the distributor is we have put in Joe's DUI distributor. So we're going to fire it up, get the timing set. But I've also put a vacuum gauge here on the engine. This should be hooked to the dyno, but I don't have a number four fitting to do it. But either way, when this thing, if it's getting valve float, this needle will go crazy bouncing back and forth. So hopefully we see something and learn what's going on here. All right. Let's go. <laughs> All right. The UI distributor versus progression and music. Here we are day number two at the dyno. I'm going to give you a brief overview of what we learned yesterday. Yesterday wasn't without its problems. Even though the engine made really good power, most of the day, if not all of the day, except for the very end, the engine was breaking up at 5,700 RPM. It was like it was hitting a brick wall and falling on its face. I initially thought that it was valve train related. I thought it was actually floating the valves as you've seen in the earlier part of the video. But Joe followed his gut instinct and brought along his DUI uh, Davis Unified Ignition distributor. And we thought that we would pull the progression ignitions uh, distributor out, put that in, make a run just to rule it out because when you get into problems like this, it's all about process of elimination. Trying to figure out what the actual culprit is can be some kind, sometimes challenging. So we go to pull the distributor out and one of the things that Joe noticed was the wire going to the HEI had a very loose connection. So we went ahead and swapped in the DUI unit made a pull and it pulled clean up to 6200 RPMs the very next run. So we really don't know if it was the wire or the distributor. So getting started today, we're going to go back, backtrace ourselves, put the other distributor in it, fix the wire and make sure everything's good to go. We also had a massive exhaust leak on this side which was it can throw off the O2 sensor readings and then we also plumbed in the vacuum port to the carburetor because 
in the video where I showed the vacuum gauge here, that was pretty telling. Even though we were trying to find valve train issues, which we didn't see, we did see that as RPMs increased, the vacuum went up on the gauge. That is an indication that the carburetor is a restriction. So with that being said, let's go in here and take a look at the numbers and I'll bring you up to date as to where we are at. So this is the last run that we made with the progression ignition. Made 476 horsepower, four, actually 477, 480 pound-feet of torque. And then you see how we get the 57, 5800, it just falls like a brick. So let's go look at the next file. Now this is with the DUI distributor. You see that it revs cleanly out here, no drastic drop. Peaked at 472, 478 torque. Now you may be wondering about this right here. That is a function of the mechanical advance in that distributor not being tuned right. So don't really pay that attention. We were just trying to find the issue of why this thing wouldn't rev from here out to here cleanly, which we found. So today we have some really cool things that we're wanting to try and just see what kind of luck we come up with. All right, so we're back day two. What we're doing is we want to repeat exactly what we seen on the last run yesterday make sure everything is still good. What do you think, Greg? We'll see, we're about to find out. What do you think about the Quadrajet? Are you surprised? Yeah, it's, it's uh, yes, surprised. Really is, uh, seems like a really good running carburetor. Air fuel ratio is dead on. Throttle response, uh, it's really a, for, for a street car. S stab the throttle to let them hear it. I mean, that, it's unreal. What about that single point intake? You, you still questioning it? No, the, the flat torque curve. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't argue with that. What do you think? I you like it? it. You like it? I like it. All right, so let's see if this thing will repeat what we did yesterday, and then we can get started. So one of the things that I noticed in that one video was the vacuum was increasing as RPM was going up. So now that we actually have it hooked to the dyno, we can see it in real time. That's why that one is, we're gonna redo, we're gonna redo this. There you go. This is replaying. That's not, man. Well, it's a little Three bit. inches. Yeah, at, at 6100, yeah. So it is a bit of a restriction. A little bit, yeah, a little bit, yeah, a little bit. And you can, you, you can see it's, you know, right at 6,000, it really starts to drop. Yeah. So it pretty much just duplicated what we did yesterday. We're going to swap the distributor out. I don't know if you can hear me because we had the fans on in here. But we're going to put the progression ignition distributor back in it and go from there. So let's see what this progressive ignition distributor does. And we're ready to go. Alright, let her eat. I 
think that's probably. Whoa! New record high. New record high. All right. All right. New record high, baby. Almost 480. Yeah, we've rounded off. It's 494 torque and 480 horsepower. Kevin. This would not be a quadra jet test if we didn't run it with the air cleaner. So we're going to run it with the lid on regular, and then we're going to do the quadra jet mod that everybody does is flip the lid to see what it does. It's already running rich a little bit, so it's going to make it that problem much worse, I think. But there's only one way to find out, ain't that right? Sure is. Are we right? I'm guessing it's going to choke 10. What do you? What y'all's guess? Yeah. Twelve. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ten to fifteen. All right. Let's see if we're all wrong or it's all like 3%, right. Percent, right? Yeah. It killed it. Wow. Wow. More than wow. that. Wow. Except I don't want to. Wow. But let's take a look at the air kill ratio. It's going to be even worse. Yeah, it probably is it's like 30 team. horsepower. No, it got better. It no, got no, better. No, actually not much better, but it was about the same. It's not the same. All yeah. right. But so. you know what? The brake specific horsepower is probably worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, brake specific is worse. Kill 30 horsepower with the lid on right. All right, so I'll turn it up. Go, go flip the lid. But see, that's every Quadrajet guy's first mod is flipping the lid. Dad didn't know about it as long as you put it back when you took the car home. <laughs> All right, we'll do it the same test? Yeah. Ready? Hit that loud pedal. Whoa! So flipping the lid apparently does work. Wow, I never would thought of it that much. It That's crazy, is it not? Yeah. Yeah, I would have never thought of it. Oh. Holy wow. crap! Flipping upside down. There's the difference in the flipped lid, y'all. What did it do to the air fuel ratio? Golly. Let's see. See, this is the stuff I like. I mean, it's just fun. I mean, who would think? 25 so, horsepower. So the uh, the previous one with the lid on was definitely much richer, a little bit richer. So the black one, which is the, the last one, um, those lines are a little above the other ones. So here's the deal. We made 480 horsepower, 494 pound-feet of torque. Well, that pretty much wraps it up. We're ending on a really high note. Joe's happy. Greg's surprised. And Dennis, what are you? you Happy here? and surprised. So there you have it. That's the kind of stuff you see here on Unity Motorsports Garage where we make horsepower, not excuses. And until next time, we'll catch you later.